Hi everyone, I'm Katie and welcome to my channel. I wanted to make this video actually in June, but because I started a new job literally in the last two weeks of June, I just decided that on one of the weekends I just didn't want to film, I just wanted to just like detune. So yeah, this is when this video should have been. So as you can guess from the title, I'm obviously talking about my reads up until this point. So I've read 17 books out of 25. For any of you who watched my first video of the year and actually the first video of my new channel, um, I basically picked 25 because I was currently being made redundant from the job I was at and I just didn't know how long I'd be, you know, unemployed for, what sort of job I would get, you know, sort of how long, like, my breaks were, if I could read at work. Basically, I didn't know sort of how my reading habits would change, so I picked quite a low target, whereas before I think I had 30 or 35 the previous year. And also a lot of the books I've read are quite dense and quite big books, so I tried to kind of, like, include a, a decent amount. And also a couple of them are, like, have got like three books in them so technically I'm reading more than really I'm actually accounting for. So without further ado let's get to it. The first book I read was Arthur and Sherlock Conan Doyle and the Creation of Homes by Michael Sim. I gave this book three stars. Second The Chaos of the Stars by Kirsten White. I gave this three and a half stars. Next up was The Heart Collector by Melinda Salisbury. This was a collection of short novellas set in the same world as The Sin Eater's Daughter. I gave that four stars. Next The Sin Eater's Daughter by Melinda Salisbury. I gave this four stars. Volume one in the complete bind up of The Wizard of Oz including The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, The Marvelous Land of Oz and Ozma of Oz. I gave this book four stars. The Sleeping Prince by Melinda Salisbury. I gave this three and a half stars. Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. Four stars. The Hidden People by Alison Littlewood. Two and a half stars. The Scarecrow Queen by Melinda Salisbury. Four and a half stars. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Four and a half stars. Traced to the Throne by Alwyn Hamilton, five stars. Volume two of The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, The Road to Oz and, and the Emerald City of Oz, three and a half stars. Here at the Fall by Alwyn Hamilton, four and a half stars. The Ring and a Crown by Melissa de la Cruz, three and a half stars. The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R. Tolkien, four stars. The amazing illustrated version of The Beauty and the Beast with the illustrations included by the House of Mina Lima, four stars. And finally, Infinite Days by Rebecca Myself. Three and a half stars. So as you can see, I have a real, real mixed bag of books. I like to really include like a lot that you will keep my interest going, you know, so it's really varied from, you know, classic books to, you know, books I really should have read to modern books some books that have literally been sat on my shelf for years so I really really like to um just keep it really varied and just really different and I think it just helps me kind of stay interested and just makes me want to keep reading and it just means I'm not just constantly sticking to the same thing over and over again. So my favourite reads of the year so far are Sin Eater's Daughters Trilogy and The Rebel of the Sands Trilogy. So if any of you have seen my reviews on this series of books you will know that I absolutely love them, I gushed about them so much I couldn't have said in enough wonderful and amazing things about these books. The authors just did such an amazing job. The storytelling, the the worlds that they're created, you know, their mythologies, just everything about them, not just to like the character development was so amazing. So definitely these are my must read so far. On the flip side of that, my biggest disappointment so far, The Hidden People. If you saw my monthly wrap up of this book, you'll know I wasn't sure if I was going to make a review on this. I never did in the end. Um, I just think this book had so much promise and I think it had the makings of a really great book, but for me it just wasn't enough. It kind of stayed too much in the world of reality and I just wanted it to break out of that. However, this would make such a great like BBC adaptation, mostly because BBC like nail these things, because I feel like it has so much great material to be jumpy, to be scary, and that whole sort of changing um, story, I think just works really brilliantly. Um, so I was really disappointed with this, but she has got another book coming out, which is similar on the lines of this is Supernaturally. I do want to give it a try because it could be different and I might enjoy it more. I thought about getting it on Kindle but then I saw the cover and I was like well these would look beautiful together. So I think I'm going to give it another go because it might just be that this book just wasn't to my taste but this other one could be really good. My biggest surprise of the year, Infinite Days. Okay so this book has been sat on my shelf for plus 10 years, I'm not even kidding. I found this when I was a teen so this was kind of really like what teen Katie likes versus what kind of adult Katie like. Obviously back when I really started really loving books and really reading them, vampires were just everywhere, you know, they were just exploding on the scene. That was, you know, the main thing. So yeah, vampires are very big. So um, I'm glad I finally picked this up because I'm not going to go into this too much because I obviously will be including this in my monthly reads. 
But um, the storytelling is really good. The idea of that she is a 500 plus year vampire or something like that and she wants to be human again and it's seeing her having to live in the modern day. I actually assume this would be set in the past still, I don't know why. And obviously, you know, she has such a different experience to everyone else and it's great how she compares life still to her vampire life. So, you know, she would just be looking at someone going, they'd be such an easy meal. It's things like how she looks at things so differently now, but she can still think back to that. So I actually really like that. It was um, quite grown up. It wasn't too silly, which I really liked. Um, I am actually now really looking forward to reading the next two books. I, I picked well, well done, potentially 13 year old me. So I have now hit that point when suddenly six months have gone and I'm looking at the next six months and I kind of sometimes at this point get a bit stuck on what to read because it's obviously I'm not really starting anything new anymore I'm now just finishing off trilogies and stuff so it gets a bit difficult for me and that's when I kind of really struggle to read so what I've got now got left to read is the follow-up to um, Infinite Days which is Stolen Nights and Eternal Dawn. I've got the rest of the Lord of the Rings so the Two Towers, Return of the King. Uh, the Chronicles of Narnia is also on my list because again these are books of classics I wanted to read. I've got the rest of the Wizard of Oz books. I'm currently reading volume three at the moment. There are five volumes so uh, 13 of the original stories that he wrote, two of the next that continue. So I've still got quite a lot to go but like I said it is just follow on books which is kind of hard so I'm now at a point where I think as well as reading those within the month I'm also going to start cherry picking other books I want to read. Hopefully you guys you have helped and participate, participate, participated in my poll. I don't know what else to read for this month of July so it's either between Uprooted by Naomi Novik or... The Beast Player, that was the other one. I got that. So um, I'm kind of not sure. I kind of think I want to go Beast Player because I don't know why I just think of Uprooted as a winter book. Maybe because it came out in winter and the sequel, well not sequel, but her next book is coming out. So I might want to read them together. So I'm kind of leaning to that. So I have been getting ideas. I know what I want to read at Christmas, regardless as to where I am within my books I want to read this year. I have an idea of books that I want to. I've sort of, from about October onwards, I've kind of gone, okay, so I want to read this. I want to read this. I want to read this because I just think of them as sort of more wintry books they're not a book I would think oh yeah I want to read that in summer but um I'm happy to say that I still get an hour's lunch break so I still get to get um an hour's worth of reading done I'm also trying to make a bit more of a conscious effort to try and read more in the afternoons because I finish at one my shift is 6 a.m to 1 p.m so a lot of free time in the afternoons but I am quite tired and I am finding when I'm reading on my lunch break my eyes are getting heavy and I'm getting sleepy so I'm still trying to get into the rhythm of my new job and then eventually I think you know things will fall into place so I want to, yeah I definitely want to try and read an extra hour when I get home because I used to do that in my old job I used to when I used to walk home I'd read an extra hour and then I would like and I still watch TV probably so yeah I want to get back into the rhythm of that but I also want to join a gym as well so <laughs> So many choices, I don't know why I do this to myself, but that is what I would like to do. So um, definitely just try and help get through my books, especially with the really big ones like The Lord of the Rings and The Wizard of Oz and The Chronicles of Narnia, they're very big, very dense. So I will basically be sort of rotating one of those a month with whatever else, like the infinite days, because that's not going to take me too long, it's going to make two books, I'll either get those done in one month or spread them across two, and then it is, it's picking other stuff that I want to read, and I'm really excited to do this, because I have a habit, as some of you may know, I like to read books all together, instead of reading them as and when they come out, I have done it before, but personal preference, I like to do that, but because I'm now back doing book two properly, I'm now thinking actually I'm going to start reading books differently so I'm going to try and change up how I normally do it so hopefully it'll work and it will totally be fine and everyone will be happy and I'll be happy and I'll be remembering what happens in plots and I may just have to like re-watch a video back which I hate the idea of doing but meh. Thank you for joining me. So, as always, I want to hear from you in the comments. What have you thought about my books? Have you read any of them? What are you thinking for what I've still got left to read? What books would you recommend to me, quite potentially? And of course, what have you been reading as well in these past six months? Same three questions, your most favourite standout reads that you would definitely recommend, most surprising books and your biggest disappointment. Of course, I will be doing another video at the end of the year to wrap this whole thing up. And I'm so close to hitting my goal of 25, actually. It's very exciting. Next year, I can like look at sort of 
having maybe like a slightly bigger one because I intend to stay in this job I really want to stay in this job I really love it and it suits me really well so I'm just I'm fed up of like job hopping so hopefully I can re-up my goal really throw around some different books and yay it'll be really awesome it'll make me happy sorry I thought I like missed a book that I thought I wanted to read this year but I was actually just thinking of a completely other different video. If you like this video and my rambles then give me a thumbs up, that would be lovely. I feel like I'm squinting and I look really tired and I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty exhausted. I work four days straight until I get a day off. Getting up four days in a row at four o'clock in the morning is killing me oh so slightly. So I feel like I look really like uh and drugged up and my face probably looks really shiny and brown because I've like, or at least shiny because I've caught so much, so much sun. I feel like I just look a bit <sighs> And I'm really sorry about that. If you're new and you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you're new and you want to subscribe, then please come and join this weird little family I've got going on. It means the world to me. And obviously, you know, I just want to hear with you and share with you and all that stuff. So I will see you in the next video. Bye.